AI and automation will reshape the landscape of telecom operations beyond automation and orchestration, both now and in the future. Miran Hadapur, Vice President of Business Development and Technology Alliances at Rakuten Symphony, is here to share his insights on AI's current impact and its potential. Miran, thank you for joining us today. So how has AI already impacted the way operators deliver and manage their services? And in which specific areas have you observed this activity? You know, great question. If you look at uh, this whole AI journey, it's, it's been um, incredibly fast in terms of innovation that's coming to market. Uh, a lot of aspects of um, people's businesses are getting impacted, and telecom is no exception. Uh, operation, if you think about uh, um, uh, what telcos deal with, is often not only the most complicated, but also the most expensive part of running a network. In some studies show almost 70% of the cost uh, of uh, running a, a telco network is, is, is managing of it and an operation aspect of the telco network, as opposed to, you know, CapEx. Uh, we see a lot of um, potential uh, for AI in terms of improving operations. I mean, this whole nirvana of getting to self-managed network could be helped greatly uh, with uh, what AI can do. A number of things you can think about uh, that has already happened, including, for example, uh, ability to um, provision uh, the network automatically, ability to do KPIs and using AI engine to analyze the performance and optimize the network infrastructure delivery, for example, uh, look at how um, uh, uh, network is performing and they change the power state, for example, of a certain set of servers in the region because they're not being utilized and as such save significant uh, power or reprovision additional infrastructure when performance is required and doing do it all that using complicated uh, considerations of, of uh, AI models and, and uh, KPI-driven automation in combination. So I think operations is probably a, a lowest hanging fruit in terms of the initial benefits of AI, which has already been realized, I think, to some extent. So beyond automation and service orchestration, what other areas do you see potential for AI to transform telecom operations? You know, it's a, a great uh, um, thing that we've seen uh, AI do um, uh, beyond just uh, service delivery and, and service management is how um, customers behaviors are modeled uh, and how do you interact with them in terms of uh, making sure they have the optimum service. And also, if you think about an operator, right, they have um, it's almost a gateway to a person's uh, habits and behaviors and usage and, and location and the, the immense amount of data that exists uh, uh, from uh, all of the end users' point of view. And optimizing your offering and services and uh, and how things are delivered uh, to the end user needs much more better to reduce churn, to eliminate um, um, issues, to, to, to provide additional services beyond. So this revenue acceleration that could be achieved uh, with AI modeling of end user behavior could be even a bigger factor than operational savings in terms of how operators could uh, um, kind of um, optimize uh, not only uh, the service they deliver, but what kind of service they deliver. And how do you treat, uh, how do you plan uh, different consumption models, for example, uh, based on um, uh, what the end users really want and, and how they use the platform and so on. So I think that's another, almost a green field for using AI for um, operators going forward. So Marin, what role do you envision for automation and AI, particularly in the context of, uh, you mentioned self-managed networks. What, what, how do you envision that unfolding? 
You know, I think, uh, <clears throat> to me, um, the whole evolution of um, ORAN and open networks and, and containerized network function delivery and, and ability to um, do network as software is, is opening doors to kind of a new level of automation and flexibility uh, for operators. The AI could be a big factor uh, around everything that uh, manages that software, both in terms of provision, how they're provisioned, the underlying infrastructure that's provisioned on, uh, how, how uh, the network services are sliced and managed uh, and delivered. All of that could benefit greatly using uh, AIization of, uh, of management and operations, as well as AIization of the whole infrastructure delivery on top of it. So I, can, I would envision a, a point that um, uh, uh, you could basically um, uh, get a use case in mind and have the uh, AI dictate where to place your um, GNOD uh, antennas, uh, how, how do you um, orient them, um, to all from population behavior in the region, uh, the mapping of the sites, uh, the configuration of the network, uh, how, how do, uh, even extending it to uh, capabilities that is being built around, uh, you know, uh, management of radio uh, networks uh, through uh, RIP uh, functionality could be also uh, driven. Uh, to uh, comprehensive AI models. So making getting to a point that um, not only the network is provisioned, but it gives the most benefit to the user, but also is optimized on an ongoing basis. As change happens, as consumption patterns changes, uh, as events occur, especially in the private 5G use case, uh, AI's good models, uh, modeling and AI-driven AI network management could be a huge help uh, in terms of faster standard reaction and most optimized service delivery. How does cloud technology contribute to automation in telecom? And do you see a trend toward a unified cloud platform for both telecom and enterprise workloads? Oh yeah, that's a great question. You know, if you look at look back uh, to this whole journey of virtualization and the benefits that the enterprise um, uh, customers achieved and this whole cloudification and public cloud, the private cloud, the benefits uh, received by the uh, uh, um, providers have been tremendous. But this whole new generation of virtualization is now evolving, right? The cloud native uh, network service delivery is, is going to change um, how everything is deployed. In the telecom infrastructure. I mean, this is something that has been rampant in the enter enterprise sector for quite a while, like large service providers such as Facebook or, or, or uh, AWS has been using this technology in Google in, in, at scale for a while. It's now finding its way to uh, the telecom up, uh, world. The benefit that they receive are significant uh, and, and profound and could change the whole way uh, network service are delivered. I project that in, in a few years, most network functions would be containerized network functions. Uh, just the efficiency that they deliver and the ease of management and provisioning, it, um, it promotes this trend in a significant way and even more than uh, what it did in the uh, enterprise world. And I see a whole, the unified cloud model that all the enterprise workloads that are running currently on container infrastructure and if it is being evolving uh, and all the telco functions are running on a common cloud and they're managed in a unified fashion and every component of the cloud native infrastructure is managed centrally and this whole segregation of all telco stuff is different uh, and we need something new technology to achieve it is no longer a factor. 
there are a number of technologies that made that happen. For example, ability to add um, cloud native storage to Kubernetes to be able to make it support stateful workload is a key factor, right? Because most things that telco uh, uh, workload uh, require state and Kubernetes by default it was stateless. So there are uh, cloud native storage technologies, especially the one that we provide that provides a high speed storage uh, functionality to Kubernetes, allowing you to run a stateful workload and protect it and manage it, which is going to change the game for the operators and promote a much faster move to cloud native uh, going forward. Well, Mehran, thank you very much for joining us today and sharing those valuable insights. Thank you for your time and a pleasure meeting you as well.